Hey, what's up guys? Hope everyone's doing really well. Screencast video this week and I wanted to talk about another recurring common question which is getting into software from scratch. Okay, and this question happens a lot. It kind of manifests in a lot of different forms like how do I get into full stack web development? How do I become a software developer? So two parts to this video. I wanted to talk about how you could potentially ask good questions and think about a flow of getting into software development from nothing and then also I wanted to talk more in depth about a boot camp curriculum and just go over it digest it with everyone so let's just get straight to the point but I use this new open source tool it's like a mind mapping tool it's pretty cool I've seen a lot of other people make flows like this kind of like decision tree so I thought I could just make a really simple decision tree to you know complement the video so green questions gray uh, answers kind of so let's just get straight into it but this decision tree is geared towards anybody who's looking to get into software from scratch all right so first question to ask yourself why do I want to learn software I made a dichotomy just two options one become a software developer get a job make money I want to be a full-time developer option two I want to learn software to supplement my skills, become more technical, and I don't need to be a full-time developer. So we're not going to talk about option two too much, focus on option one. This is probably the majority. So how can I learn software? Next question. Uh, one, one is obviously this is the conventional way, the way that everyone can talk about from ivory towers. The conventional way is probably go to school get a bachelor's, get a master's, some kind of degree, get internships, uh, find a job after graduating. So the pros of this, uh, good foundation, that's always good. It's structured, methodical learning, and there's some level of credibility, always. Cons, uh, life, life is the big con. You know, life doesn't allow it sometimes. You, it's too much money, it's too expensive. You can't take out the loan. You've got too many other responsibilities. You're not, you know, uh, high school student like with zero responsibilities life uh, too it's you can't afford to drift too much in college college is like very short so when you're there to do something you have to be sure you're doing it you can't be there switching majors not making up your mind and wasting time and money and three the con is it's overall it's low accessibility not many people even have options of doing this conventional thing so let's just keep moving down uh, second, second is non-conventional doing a boot camp. So we're going to get more in depth into this, but let's just do a quick overview of this. Non-conventional do a boot camp pros, fast, flexible, less commitment and less money, but still some amount of money. You'll probably be end up, end up paying five to $20,000 us dollars pros finely tuned to get you a job and that's the only purpose of a boot camp it's a finely tuned machine to get you a job and we're going to talk more about this in the second half of the video cons of the boot camp uh, i think we talked about this before you might have holes in your knowledge that you need to eventually fill and i think everyone's aware of that uh, the second con of doing a boot camp is there's some level of developer social stigma you know a lot of people think like oh i have a cs degree i'm better than everyone that has a boot camp degree um, this is inevitable i'm guilty of you know judging people like this sometimes but it's just what it is so i think if as long as you're aware of that there is a level of social stigma that you just have to be aware of um, and just be ready for that so uh third just to wrap up the decision but third is non-conventional and this is completely self-directed we won't get into so much detail here because this one's very loose. So non-conventional, self-directed, but the pros to this is that no money, completely flexible, zero commitment, and you can learn whatever you want. Uh, cons to completely self-directed learning to become a software developer is that there's no guidance, probably no guidance, not much structure, and you get minimum to no credibility unless you create something awesome. If you create something awesome and you can put it on your resume it's a really good showcase of what you can do and you did all of this on your own that's pretty awesome that might shine through uh, the not doing these other things um, the last con not really a con but the last thing to just be aware of if you 
uh, can't afford to do the conventional way or even do the boot camp or life is affecting either of those things, something like this where it's completely self-directed will require like some significant focus and mental strength. And that's tough for everyone. So, so that's just the basic overview of potentially really quick high-level decisions you can make uh, with deciding to pursue this as a career if that's what you've decided to do. One thing I want to talk about in more detail for the second half of the video is the path of the boot camp. So I want to review that path before we dive into it, but it's why do I want to learn software? I want to get a job. I want to make money. I want to be a developer. How can I learn it? I can't do the conventional way, so I'm doing the non-conventional way through a boot camp. And the one pro that they always advertise, it's, it's going to get you a job. So how are they going to get you a job? And let's just switch gears and talk about that. All right, guys. So what you're seeing here is the curriculum for the App Academy Boot Camp. Uh, there's a bunch of them out there. I personally have some experience with App Academy. They're in San Francisco and New York City. And I think they have a pretty good curriculum that they've iterated on. And... I've been to some of their like demo days and met students coming out of App Academy, and I do think they do a pretty good job of structuring uh, their curriculum and getting uh, people that you know don't have conventional degrees into software quickly and getting them jobs. So, pretty much what they promise is, let's just look at this. They this is what they promise. They train a bunch of students, and the graduates get hired at top tech companies and earn an average salary of whatever. So. How do they do that? But they do that with a very structured curriculum that we're going to talk about. And it's always good to know the purpose of these curriculums. This, these curriculums are not meant to give you a deep knowledge of computer science. It's just to get you in the door. That's the only purpose. They're fulfilling a need of supply and demand. There's a lot of demand for developers now, as you guys probably know. So to meet that demand, the supply has got to go up and to make that supply go up you have flexible accessibility to learn about development so let's just dive into like what their curriculum is and they have 12 weeks and we'll go through kind i'm going to do a quick rundown of all 12 weeks and you guys can look at this offline but just to give a taste of what you could expect at a boot camp so first thing they teach you is you have to learn a language they pick ruby but before you get in, into any frameworks, into web, into anything, you have to just learn a language. So they teach you basic Ruby, object-oriented design, how to write to a file, and they teach basic, basic algorithms and data structures. So that's just learning the language, and that's like one week, so that's pretty crazy. Uh, week two, you uh, push it a little further and you learn about test-driven development. Uh, so I think week two is um, get more into data structures, algorithms, but it's still learning Ruby at its core. Uh, by the end of week two, week three, you go straight into other technologies, uh, which is SQL. And Active Record is uh, a popular uh, Ruby library to you know sit on top of SQL in some databases. But here, this is just to get you familiar with databases and SQL, which is another pervasive technology across the board. It teaches you how to write queries, write joins, uh, design some basic schema, learn what foreign keys are, how to make indexes. Uh, but this is also very basic and it happens pretty fast. Once you learn the ins and outs of a database, they start teaching you slowly. They get into the web. So week four, I think, is the first introduction into web technologies. So this is the first application of the software you've just learned. Uh, they teach you what HTTP is, what REST is, what MVC means, uh, what routing means, you know, how different URLs route to different, you know, methods in your backend and basic authentication. Um, so I think week five, they keep pushing on that. You start learning Rails because Rails is a very standard way of doing web programming with Ruby. So all this Rails stuff you did in the prior weeks is leading you up. Sorry, all the Ruby stuff you did in the prior weeks is leading you up to learning Rails, which will enable you to build web applications. And that's kind of week five. So uh, week six, I think they start getting you into JavaScript a little more. Uh, if you learn Rails, it's more of, a, I guess, a backend technology, but still JavaScript is the dominant language of the whole world, according to Stack Overflow. So they got to teach you 
some JavaScript. They also teach you uh, React, which is, you know, the popular Facebook framework for doing JavaScript these days. And React is pretty cool. It's new, it's relevant, and like I think they picked it for a reason because a lot of companies are hiring for it. And you have to learn these days if you just know vanilla JavaScript is usually not enough. So they teach you like one framework and library to use with it. Um, now getting to weeks eight and nine is kind of the cool thing. So everyone at um, App Academy, they do these full stack projects at the end. Uh, don't read into all this stuff, but pretty much what the full stack project is, is they just replicate an existing site. So they remake Facebook, they remake Twitter, they remake Airbnb, um, and they just remake popular sites and you kind of do it uh, from a really, you kind of make a prototype of Facebook and do whatever it takes to make that happen. So um, that's pretty cool because it's a more real life example. You're not just, you know, doing one-off little projects in tutorials, but you're actually designing a website that companies have designed. So that's pretty much once week eight hits, that's for the remainder of the boot camp. Um, so the last part of their curriculum is what they call algorithms and career support. And this part I thought was particularly pretty interesting because this part is getting you really ready to apply for a job. So this is how to do a job search, how to do resume, cover letter stuff, how to prepare for interviews. Uh, even like salary negotiations, tech workshops, um, also how to hire or how to get hired. And this is just all interview prep. So these last three weeks, it's completely dedicated for you to also get a job, which is really great because I think what App Academy does is they get paid when you finally land a job. So um, yeah, I don't want to go into too many details of this. Also, they have a very you know, high level overview of what they're doing, but hopefully you guys, you guys, I'll give a link to this page later and also my decision tree. But if you take a look at the curriculum that the boot camp has provided for you, you have to recognize that this is what uh, other developers have decided is the best way to get in the door of a company as an entry level developer. So this is like, this is like highly fine tuned is what I'm saying. Like if you're trying to go on your own or if you don't have the resources to even to go to a boot camp, you might want to try to follow this to get the fastest way to get in the door. Because what they're doing here is they're like pummeling you. They're like injecting you with all the necessary, the prerequisite skills just to add value as a developer, as a developer in any company. So pretty much this is the bare bones of what it takes for you to get paid as a developer. And if that's what you want to do, I would suggest you might even, I would suggest you review this. And you know, if your life supports it, maybe even taking on one of these boot camps because it is flexible. Uh, it's still, it costs less money, but I think the main thing for many people is that it's flexible and not many people can go through the conventional way as life moves on. It just gets harder and harder to do this number one here as you know you progress uh into life so um yeah that's about it guys so the whole purpose of this video um just wanted to talk about why let's just do a basic recap but if you're asking yourself this question why do i want to learn software um it could be for two major reasons but really know why you want to learn software like learning software to get a job as a developer is very different than learning software just to become more technical and once you've made your decision either one or two you got to figure out uh, your path based on life resources uh, your own personality what you think is going to work best for you but there's a lot of stuff out there and as we said we just dove right into this boot camp curriculum but if you want the quick finely tuned way to get a job just review this and it should be helpful so that's it for the video guys please uh, like it if you liked it uh, leave me any comments this is always a topic that is slightly controversial but you know if you happen to have a discussion in the comments uh, check out these links and hope everyone has a great week all right take care